you're watching the Cloud Native Telco Summit, part of our year-round DSP leaders coverage. I'm Guy Daniels and we have a special programme today. With the help of Swisscom, we answer some of the most common questions around Cloud Native workflows, roles and practices that we have received from Summit viewers. And joining me are Joel Studler who is DevOps engineer at Swisscom, and Ashan Senavarathni, who is product owner also at Swisscom. Well, hello, good to meet both of you, and thanks so much for bringing your first-hand experience to help us answer some of these really common and regular viewer questions we get. But before we do, I'd just like to ask you first of all, Ashan, what does cloud native mean to you? Yeah, so first of all, thanks for having us. Um, so cloud native is much more than um, having workloads uh, deployed on hyperscales, for, for an example, because you, you hear this term quite a lot often in the industry. And while that might be part of the process at its core, uh, cloud native is much more about how you design, build and run your applications. It's more about leveraging microservices, containers automation and continuous delivery to make your systems more scalable, resilient and agile. And um, it's really a whole new way of thinking uh, about infrastructure and applications. And also a large part is also how you transform your organization, uh, how you simplify your change processes and all these things comes along with uh, how you can uh, keep these uh, workloads more scalable and res resilient. So it's fundamentally rethinking how your technology works to make everything more efficient and adaptable in my view. That's great, Asha, because we, we do have a, a lot of questions from viewers about what cloud native means. And every panel we do, we get different versions of, of, of what cloud native actually represents. Um, but can I also ask you, Asha, you know, how important is cloud native to Swisscom? Cloud native is absolutely central to what we are doing at Swisscom. Uh, we are undergoing through a big transformation, uh, what we call moving from a traditional telco to a technology company, or we call it a tech co. And it's not just a buzz, buzzword for us, it's fundamentally shifting how we think and operate our networks. Now, in order to achieve this, we've got a couple of initiatives going uh, internally. Uh, one is the SRE transformation, the, and the other one is the, uh, the cloud native uh, transformation. And what's exciting in here is uh, it's also not driven top down. Uh, we have our engineers uh, um, uh, taking ownership and driving the innovation and also taking a community driven, a decentralized approach uh, that everyone's empowered to make the decisions and also making this transformation work. Great. Thanks, Ashen. Really interesting. And we'll come on to SRE a little bit later in our chat. Um, but Yul, I'd like to, to bring you in as well. Um, you know, from your perspective in, in your work at Swisscom, just how important is cloud native? I think it's it's really important because um, cloud native is a is a development that has been going on for for a few years now in the community, and that's maybe also something I, I feel like the definition of cloud native. Um, I tend to to um, uh, see it the way CNCF Cloud Native Confu Computing Foundation actually defines it, and it's really organized about this community around this community driven approach to actually um, write software together. Um, enhance it together, test it together, and find the best possible solutions for the industry. And because Swisscom is embracing cloud native for years now, um, I think it's crucial for our success. Swisscom is not only a telco, it's only, also an IT provider, like um, doing professional services for external companies. So it has been around for a while, and now the telco part of Swisscom also needs to adapt, right? Great, thanks, Joel. And as you as you said there, you know you've been doing cloud native for a long time at, at Swisscom. We've been following your activities for, for a number of years. Um, but I'd like to move on now to some of our viewer questions. Um, and I've got a first one here. And and Joel, let me address this one to you first, if I may. Uh, and the question asks: We already have developers working on specific projects. But is it more productive to combine all our distributed resources and create a central team? You'll, what would you say to that? Yeah, I see where the question is coming from. I mean, I see some advantage in centralizing things, but in general, I think the industry is moving more towards a decentralization. Uh, we've we've seen it with the dev and ops teams in the past uh, that didn't really work out. There was a lot of tension. Uh, we've introduced DevOps, um, 
we're introducing more more and more things into this DevOps um, uh, uh, way of working, right? Um, but at some, you, you need to balance it in a way, right? Um, and what I think is crucial uh, to have in a company um, of, of of a bigger size is to have like enabling teams that provide services to other teams, like just just like a cloud service you consume from 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 a from a hyperscaler, but to have these kind of enabling services and platform teams that help you getting the the stuff done. Uh, especially on Kubernetes, um, it's hard to distribute all this deep knowledge you need in order to operate and, and actually run Kubernetes properly. So there, I think that's really helpful to have like enabling teams that are centralized and that provide these services to the rest of the company. Great, great advice there, Yul. Thanks so much indeed for helping with that one. Um, another question we have here, and um, Ashan, let me put this one to you. And the question states, we are constantly changing our structure and roles from DevOps to platform engineers to site reliability engineers and so on. Nothing stays the same for long. Is it necessary to follow the latest cloud native role definitions or are these roles actually more fluid and flexible? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great question. Um, as you all mentioned earlier, um, even DevOps, like it has many terms now, like DevSecOps, DevBiz, uh, DevOps, uh, and FinOps, etc. I think in a cloud native environment, role needs to be flexible. Uh, at Swisscom, we have found that uh, sticking too rigidly to define these roles, like DevOps platform engineer or SRE, uh, it can really hold us back. Um, and what's more important for us is the skills and the mindset that individuals bring to the table in the end. And uh, as we are transitioned from this telco to techco, we've learned that roles should evolve too. Uh, obviously, and uh, instead of following these latest trends in low role definitions, we should focus on creating roles that suits our um, goals and also the projects. So I guess my uh, the 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 final um, the answer would be like flexibility and the adaptability is needed, and uh, it should really be driven by the projects and the goals of this uh, transformation. Great, thanks, Ashani. Yeah, we we hear this as well. Um, there's there's a real focus on specific roles but really what's the business outcome what what, what are we trying to achieve as, as well um you'll let me come across to you uh, for, for your thoughts on um how how rigidly we should stick to roles or, or should we be more flexible yeah so <clears throat> i feel like the most successful uh, way of of implementing that i i think it's important to have some flexibility and what's most crucial to understand as a company and as uh, as 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 a company as a whole, from the engineer to the managers, uh, is to understand the, the the importance of ownership. I guess um, I think it's really it's crucial to have a community internally uh, in a company or or even globally um, across multiple companies that take ownerships ownership for for certain topics and really drive things forward without the exactly declared role that actually allows them to do so. So I think ownership, moving things forward, trying to make a change, trying to to um, to progress on certain topics, I think that's crucial for a company to succeed in general. Great. Well, thanks very much, both of you, for, for those answers. Um, moving on to our, our next question, and, and Joel, let me, let me uh, stay with you for, for this one. The question asks, our cloud native activity is being driven by the IT division, how do we best integrate and align this work with the network division? Yeah, that's an interesting one. I think the the general perception of of these two divisions, let's say, or um, industries even, um, is that the the IT industry is ahead of us, right? We currently think that in in the cloud native world, um, yeah, I mean you can see broad adoption in the IT world uh, with new apps coming around that will be cloud native and truly cloud native. So that's very nice, that's very great. However, I think there are still many unsolved problems in this IT world, for instance, config management. We have we have some tools available to, to manage this, this kind of uh, the, the complexity we have in configurations. However, I think these tools like Helm, Customize, um, or, or even more legacy stuff like Terraform or Chinja, they solve certain problems, but they really 
hit a limit at some point. And I think we need to jointly work on this together, the telco and the IT industry to really find solutions that work, that, that actually scale, that allow us to do proper proper and stable operations. Um, I think even GitOps to some extent um, has a limit and and there are some, some voices in the industry and in the IT industry that really point towards telco for leading the way on configuration management, for instance. So I think it should be more of a collaboration rather than telco thinking we're, we're, uh, uh, we're still lacking behind. Um, we should really learn from each other, I think. Thanks so much, Joel. Um, we have one more viewer question. Uh, Ashan, I'm going to come back to you because you mentioned or you alluded to this earlier. The question is, is a robust and functional cloud native operation necessary before you can start a site reliability engineering transformation, an SRE transformation? We are being advised by our partners that we need to spend on SRE. Ashan, your thoughts on this? Yeah, so it's a, my answer would be not at all, but it also depends on the context of the what it means by SRE because SRE is a quite broad topic. It has seven principles, so you can apply it on based on different maturity levels. So on the cloud native end, um, you don't need to have a fully mature cloud native operations before diving into SRE. Uh, in fact, at Swisscom, uh, we are using SRE or the reliability practices on the service layer, which are underneath there all the 4g uh, technology so these are applied on the virtual virtual network functions um, so what's important in this reliability is focus on the service layer and it's regardless of what the un underneath technology so it could be either 4g 5g or vnfs or the cnfs and on the cloud native end investing in sre can really help us to accelerate the cloud native journey because you are embedding these best practices from start and uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's it's less about waiting uh, one thing to be fully in place and more about growing these capabilities in parallel because you can apply them in different maturity levels where CNFs are quite mature from the cloud native end and VNFs are uh, not that mature. Great. Thanks, Ashish. So don't, don't wait. Uh, keep, keep focusing on SRE. Uh, uh, thanks very much for, for those comments. Um, excellent. Thank you so much, both of you, for addressing those viewer questions. But let's end with a final question from me. What are the next steps on your cloud native program at Swisscom? Because I'm sure a lot of our viewers who have taken uh, leads and advice from what you've just been saying, they'd be interested to know where you're heading next. Uh, Yo, what's your comments here? Where, where, where might Swisscom move with its cloud native activities? So I think the, the important thing for us is focusing on telco. So we, I cannot speak for the other divisions of Swisscom, but in telco, I think the the, the goal is really to try to make things cloud native, to make run it in, in Kubernetes or Kubernetes-like environments. Um, so one, one example is this whole NetConf um, topic. So NetConf by design is not cloud native. Uh, it's really, it's not even declarative. It's, um, it's a protocol that's, that by design is not cloud native, yet every vendor and everyone seems to embrace it in telco. So that's clearly one thing we try to, to um, move into a more cloud native direction with reconciliation with all the features we we get from from cloud native. So there is this tool called SDC. We've we've already introduced it at KubeCon um, by um, by by some people at Nokia uh, initi initiated. Um, we try to uh, continue on configuration management to really um, have a proper way on configuring these CNFs. We, I mean, we have thousands of parameters in our applications that we need to somehow configure. And we wish to have some kind of dynamic configuration system where we are able to automate the configuration management, at least partially, and not needing to rely on manual interaction for each and every config change. I think these are the two main topics <clears throat> Um, and then, of course, focusing on the community, um, building internal communities, um, external, uh, the, the global community, trying to, to um, really um, collaborate with other telcos. Um, and we're also trying to um, shift our focus more to open source, open sourcing things and, and collaborating, contributing to open source projects. Really interesting. Thanks very much, Joel. And Ashan, uh, what can you add here? Where, where are you seeing uh, uh, Swisscom moving with its, with its 
cloud native activities in telco yeah so if i zoom out a little bit and add a bit more context to what you all mentioned um so the next big thing for us is to have our 5g dual mode core in production and scaling uh, all the tooling and the capabilities that we've introduced to the dual mode core into areas like voice services and the oss bss tooling and we also ensure that whatever we do we use sre practices uh, from start and also <clears throat> in line with the cloud native principles and uh, beyond this technology aspect, we are also challenging how we operate the network, uh, aiming to simplify the change processes and also uh, uh, mainly focusing on the people transformation as aspect as well. So it's uh, it's not just a tech transformation. Uh, we are going through a big cultural shift here internally. Um, maybe one last thing is we are also um, uh, organizing a cloud native forum. Uh, so this is uh, happening end of the end of the year. Uh, with other European operators mainly targeting. Uh, so uh, so keep an eye for it. Uh, we will uh, share more information closer to the date on that. Great. Thanks, Ashan. Well, we certainly will keep an eye out for that. Uh, and um, you mentioning the, the, the people transformation, the cultural uh, shift as well, that, that's very Im important as, as part of the, the cloud native telco transformation. Uh, we must leave it there for now, though. Ashtan and Joel, good talking with you and thanks very much for helping to answer some of our most frequently asked viewer questions. And don't forget, if you are watching this during our Cloud Native Telco Summit, then please keep sending in your questions because we have a live Q&A show later today. Goodbye for now.